Happy to be here at the new studio, new season of Sports Wired. We're excited. But they really need to close out the regular season by winning two of the last three games. Riley Lachance couldn't get the threes he wanted. Wade Baldwin was turning the ball over quite a bit. One of the oldest ones on that staff is a redshirt sophomore. And hello and welcome to the very final episode of the Johnny McCrary meets Sam Wilde show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, last episode ever for us seniors here and last episode of the season. So, you know, got to go out with a bang. Lots of tears. Be prepared. It's going to be a fun time. Um, this week in baseball, we had a lot of stuff going on. Took down Kentucky team. That was doing pretty well. The big news was Jordan Sheffield had a big week with his first career shutout, 14 strikeouts, and it was really a great outing. Yeah, Jordan Sheffield was looking awesome, and he even won National Pitcher of the Week honors, which was huge for him. So, I mean, you know, like, he's been doing well, but so far this is what we really need to see from him, this breakout performance. And that's all the news we've got. <laughs> and since it is the year in review show and really the career in review, uh, career in review <laughs> show, we're going to send it over to the whiteboard with Cutler to shoot some questions at us. For our favorite game, official favorite last What's game. up, guys? Congratulations on your final show. You guys have contributed so much to Sports Wired over the years. I've only been here for one of them, but it's been an incredible ride for you guys. And with that, I decided to put together the final favorite game. Every time it's a new favorite game, today is the final favorite one. We're going through both of your four years here at Vanderbilt for the best of all of it, from sports to just being students in general. So to start off, what was your favorite moment in Commodore sports from your four years here at Vanderbilt? That's a good one. Um, I, I love think these graphics, I, by the way. The baseball <laughs> they're stuff awesome. is amazing. I think we were actually really fortunate to have a pretty good four years of <laughs> Commodore sports compared to what it has in the past. I think we've yeah. seen a lot of the best moments in history, honestly, for Commodore sports. I don't think you could really pick a better four-year stretch <laughs> unless you maybe want to include the year before us when they have the uh, SEC, SEC basketball yeah. title. But exactly. Can't really complain. Definitely can't complain. Um, I would say, I mean, I have a lot of favorites. I think... My favorite ever was actually this year for men's basketball when Vanderbilt beat Kentucky at home. And we, they, all the students swarmed, stormed the court afterwards. It was just nothing I've ever seen. I never thought I would see that memorial. It was just incredible. The energy in there was, there's already usually a lot of energy, but being in there on that day was the best sporting event I've attended at Vanderbilt. It was so yeah. much fun. Those Kentucky games were always great, win or lose, like our freshman year. We right. always beat them out for a you know, whole blown shot clock violation. But anyhow, just being there and actually seeing them win was amazing because we haven't seen too many great wins at home. There was like the NIT game. Right. Uh, there was the win against a and earlier that year. Right. But there weren't a lot of quality wins while we've been here. No, and that one, there was just something so special about being in Kentucky and doing it in Memorial Gym. It was just Memorial Magic at its finest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, there's, there's only one answer, really. It's got to be winning the College World Series. Right. I was lucky enough to actually be out in Omaha, and it was just so just crazy. And it, Like when it happened, I didn't really know how to react. Um, but it was one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen. And we were all watching you know, the whole College World Series run, and I can remember like I was at the beach with my family. And of course, the one week that they schedule a trip to the beach is the College World Series. <laughs> so we're like, watching in our room, and we we're playing Texas. And it's like, all right. We can just score a run here and win this game. Mm -hmm. We'll be going to the College World Series and I have a chance to go to Omaha and it happened and then that was great. That was so cool. Just not many schools get to win a national championship, let right. alone in like one of the major sports. Right. Uh, that was so cool. Being there must have been unbelievable. I think if I was there, it would be like unlike anything else. I was watching in my living room in my pajamas with my parents and it was still incredible and I was still jumping up and down and screaming. So I can't even imagine being there. The best part really honestly was going with a uh, friend of the show, Austin Brown, to the casinos mm -hmm. until 4 a.m. that morning. <laughs> because we had a flight at like 5.30, so why would we go to sleep for oh, a few hours? Why not stay up? Uh, yeah, it was, a great time. it was the best. Yeah, we're lucky we got to see two national championships while we were here. Really Absolutely. good stuff. I remember being in Saucer watching the women's tennis team on my phone <laughs> and just streaming it. And I was the only one who was watching. Going, yeah! <laughs> I was also streaming it on my phone, yeah. What's happening? Yeah, so lots of good moments in, in, <laughs> to sum it all up. 
Very cool. I got to witness that College World Series win from my TV back home myself. Not before, still a Vanderbilt fan, not a student yet. I can only imagine the feeling of anybody who had actually been on campus for a lot of those games. So moving into our favorite, your favorite game. Single game, doesn't have to be in any sort of tournament and any sort of playoffs. Just favorite Commodore sports game in your four years. I'm going to flip these questions around a little bit. Yeah, well, it's okay. I mean, even though the Kentucky was my favorite moment, maybe my, I can say my favorite game was sophomore year when we went to the bowl game in Birmingham. Mm. We, our road trip down, it was before school had started. You know, you had to, and it was so fun doing the road trip, doing the tailgates down there in Birmingham, and then winning the bowl game, which was a unique experience as well. So that was a super fun atmosphere as well. That was yeah. my favorite game. I remember we were um, trying to figure out which bowl game Vandy would go to, and we were thinking if there's an outside shot, we go to the Gator Bowl. And the worst bowl game they could have ended up going to was the BBVA Compass Bowl, which of course they went to. But that <laughs> ended up being the best news for me because like I already had plans for New Year's with my family. I was out in like Denver, <laughs> so there was no way I was gonna like be able to like make it to or see the game. Right. So we lucked out that we had this terrible bowl game that ended up winning big. Yeah, it worked out. We didn't have to come back too early. I remember I came back to normal time and just road trip down from Nashville. So yeah. that was a ton of fun. Yeah, I think my favorite game was this, uh, it's one of two. All right, we're gonna go with uh, the first game of the College World Series this year, or this past year. Um, I had a deeper connection with this most recent team because I was following around the team for a month and a half. Right. And the first game of the College World, World Series we have Carson pitching, and obviously when Carson's pitching, we think we're going to win, but the other pitcher, Thomas Eshelman from Cal State Fullerton, just did not give up hits at all. He got one that, hit yeah. in six innings. But then the game got rained out. Like, praise the weather gods, because <laughs> if they hadn't rained it out, Eshelman would have thrown like a complete game. We come back the next day at noon, the first pitch of the game is a full count. It's a double to right field by Xander Wheel, and then we get a walk-off homer by Jared Kendall which was just unbelievable. And if we hadn't won that game, probably don't even make the no, finals. Right. I do remember that. That was a good one, too. And what I forgot to say about the uh, the bowl game, the only downside to that one, well, depends on how you look at it, but was that it was Coach Franklin's last game ever. And I remember he, we, no one knew what was happening. The game yeah. had ended, and we were like, is he staying? Is he going? And no one had any idea. He just didn't say anything. And then what was it? How many days later, he just, just got on a plane and flew yeah. <laughs> to Flew to Penn State, like it was yeah. just. In the middle of the game, there was even rumors going around that Al Golden, who was Miami's coach, had like agreed to become right. Penn State's coach, and then there was like a like media um, MVP ballot that came out, and I tweeted out some joke like, "Can't decide if it should be Jordan Matthews or Al Golden, who's the real <laughs> MVP here." And then they like get to the press conference, and then right as we're all about to leave, one of the TV guys just goes. Are you staying at Vanderbilt? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, like, he, like, he like doesn't even respond. We're like, okay. He left us all, kept us all in the dark. That was that was the only downside of that. That was a weird, a weird time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, part of me sort of wonders, like, is that the James Franklin era? Is that the Jordan Matthews era? Mm. But, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that Coach uh, Franklin could have done much with the little talent that Coach Mason's had to work with. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough. I, yeah. We try not to think about him too much. <laughs> Uh, any thoughts, Cutler? That was the most interesting time of Commodore sports, to say the le least, when they, they were in the spotlight for most of it. I, mean, I remember seeing all the reports about James Franklin leaving, AD David Williams denying it, but then it happened anyways. James Franklin brings a, brings a Penn State moving truck into Nashville to move all his stuff <laughs> out of his house. It, it's amazing how one man can go from a school's hero to a school's arch nemesis in a matter of <laughs> minutes really if you think about it, the speed of information that came out on Twitter that day fascinating stuff and that bowl game was absolutely incredible as well an interesting way to go out to say the least moving on to the best team from any sport and at Vanderbilt any year that you saw in your four years um, I mean I think it would have to be when the, the baseball team that won the national championship just it wasn't even you know you could argue that last year's team was even more talented it wasn't even that it was just like the way the way they acted around each other like how excited yeah. they got just like the team culture on that team i think is probably the best team culture that any vanderbilt team has ever had not to throw any shade at the women's bowling team no nah, true true uh, <laughs> I, th I think that's 
basically the right answer. I, I do want to give a shout out to our freshman year baseball team, which was mm -hmm. maybe the most talented team ever at Vanderbilt because yeah. you have Tony Kemp, who's the SEC Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. We have the seniors, Mike Yastrzemski and Connor Harrell that are coming back. Right. If Dansby had been healthy, that would have been a completely different team. That's but true. We have like freshman Xavier Turner, Kevin Zomek, Tyler Beatty. Yeah. There's just so many good players that they just couldn't make it out of the NCAA tournament. Right. So, you know, ultimately because they don't have as good of a outcome at the end, don't even make it to the College World Series. Right. Hard to pick them for best team, but they were a stupidly talented team. Too. That's true. They won. They went like 26-2 and two in uh, SEC play, which is impossible. It's nuts, yeah. That's true. They were they were super talented, but you know that that team, the national championship team, just had just had that heart and that drive. I don't know. They Special were just place in our hearts. they always will, always will. <laughs> well, I always say if Tyler Beatty doesn't make it in the MLB, he will have a very stellar rap career. <laughs> looking looking now to individual players, there have been a lot of great players that have come through Vanderbilt in your time here. Who is your favorite? You just said him. <laughs> it's gotta be Tyler Beatty. It's him or Johnny McCrary. Like man crush goes back. We, yeah, we all know Ben's love for Johnny McCrary. Yeah. Can't even. I remember the first time I got to interview both of them. We weren't allowed to interview freshmen uh, on the football team while Coach Franklin was here until their first spring practice when they were going to their sophomore year because Johnny would had his first spring practice. Anyhow, <laughs> very exciting to write a huge giant feature on Johnny McCrary because. He's such just a hilarious person. He is. And the first question I asked him was, why is your nickname Big Daddy? <laughs> and, or why is your Twitter handle Big Daddy Indonesia? <laughs> and the answer was basically, first half was, he just wants to travel to Indonesia. And it like, used to be Big Daddy Japan and Big Daddy China. It's just he wants to visit there. And then uh, at least what he told me for Big Daddy was uh, when he would be at church as a little boy, with his grandma, he go, um, when I grow up, I'm gonna get you a house, I'm gonna get you a car, I'm gonna get you all this. And she's like, all right, big daddy. So <laughs> that may or may not be the story. <laughs> that, is, that sounds like John McCrary. He's a ridiculous person. He's hysterical, but yeah. he, I had a class with him and he would wear Uggs to class in the summer. So it was interesting. He's a, he does sure. his own thing, you know? Maybe he's just trying to be Tom Brady, you know? <laughs> so stylish. Yeah, well, I guess that's the obvious answer for Ben. You would think that the obvious answer for me would be Dansby Swanson. That's my Valentine. She's found out <laughs> yes. the show Valentine. Here. Why he's repping his jersey right now. But as much as I love Dansby and he has a special place in my heart, I think I have to say my favorite player is uh, Hayden Stone on the baseball team, the pitcher, uh, just because I was DU Scepter. So I met him on the first day of school. And uh, it was really cool watching him grow and watching him get to pitch in the World Series and talking to him and texting him, congratulating him. He would send pictures, and it was just so fun. He's just a really good kid, and mm -hmm. I was just so excited to see the success that he had. And um, so I have to say Hayden Stone. It's always so cool when you're in, like, a, a group project with someone or yeah. you're in their VU set group. That's one of the things that I'll definitely miss about college is just interacting with these kids is, like, I can – still root for Vanderbilt forever and right. have a connection with the future football, baseball, basketball players, but right. not seeing them around campus or like some of them like, you know, know my name. Right, stuff. exactly. The ones that you that? know personally. There's a lot of baseball players in a lot of my classes and that was really cool. Yeah. I also have to give a special shout out to Tommy Openshaw because he was also in my VUSEP group. He was great. He just wasn't there as much because it was during the football season. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to know him as well, but he's the nicest kid ever. Yeah, so. I was in a management group with him and yeah. Darius Sims. Colby Cook, the punter, who's like one of the nicest yeah. kids ever. Fitz Lassen, who's like a fullback with a 4-0 GPA <laughs> and a soccer player. So yeah. we had like all our group project <laughs> meetings in uh, Madugan. That's that was awesome. Such a good guy out. Yeah, that's something, yeah, that's something I'm going to miss. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of athletes to go around here at Vanderbilt. I'm only in classes with a bunch of baseball players, mostly freshmen, including Alonzo Jones and Chandler Day, both very, very nice people. Moving into our promos, before my time here, Sports Wired tended to make a lot of Sports Center style, this is Sports Wired promos. What was your favorite one that you guys made? Those are some high quality promos. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Sam Wilde, our past producer, for putting those together. And director. And director. <laughs> he did it all. He's a great guy. Um, yeah, we had, well, there were three. Yes. There was one where you guys were scribbling down notes, and you'd crumple up the paper, throw them away, and Damian Jones would get it in the garbage can. Mm -hmm. There was one with 
Mr. Commodore, what was he doing? Asking um, Allison, Allison went on a date. Allison went on a date. date. So Mr. Commodore, that was a good one. Did, did she stand him up? Yeah, yeah, she did. Allison stood up Mr. C. It was a great time. And then the last one was Ben and Shelby Motes in the men's bathroom checking out their hair. That was a good time. <laughs> What's your favorite? You were, um, you were. My, my favorite is Damien Jones, just because it was like very awkward the way it was done. Because like <laughs> we jump up the paper and throw it, and it would like just obviously not make it to the trash can at the same path <laughs> that the ball, the, the like ball that paper was yeah. falling. And then Damien's like this seven foot behemoth, <laughs> and we had a studio. The ceiling is like like eight and a half, nine. Not that tall. Over there. <laughs> he'd like jump a little bit and then have these like little dinosaur arms that catch you and then like <laughs> it in. And it's just so awkward overall. And like he's like this nice, goofy, awkward kid to start with. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like perfectly awkward all around. <laughs> Speaking of favorite people, Damien is also one of my favorite yeah. people. He will always say hi walking around campus and make a funny face or, mm -hmm. you know, give you a hug. And he's a really, really sweet guy. But he was a good sport for doing that, even though it didn't work out perfectly. He was a good sport for doing that. But. Mine will be the Ben and Shelby Motes in the bathroom, um, just hysterical, <laughs> because the running joke was all about Shelby Motes' hair and just how I think he gets, he thinks he looks like a model. Mm -hmm. So the premise of the promo was just them checking themselves out, and it was just very yeah. funny. He, you know, he's I remember like when we like. We are, he knew he was coming to do like a commercial, yeah. but didn't know what it was. And as soon as he told me, he was like, oh yeah, of, of course, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> That was pretty funny. That was a good one. <laughs> How about you, Color? Do you have a favorite one? I like that Damian Jones one. It still runs on our VTV auto rotation. I have not seen the Shelby Motes one yet, but I would definitely want to look that up. I mean, <laughs> acts like he thinks he looks like a supermodel or does look like a supermodel. <laughs> Your uh, choice is yours. Moving to our final question, you touched on a couple of these things already. What will you miss the most about not only being a sports wired host, but being involved in Vanderbilt? In Vanderbilt sports specifically, right? Our involvement time here. Yeah. All Vandy media. There's a lot of things. Um, I just think something that was cool was that, you know, Vanderbilt doesn't have a traditional journalism program, but they still give you all these opportunities that you don't get at a lot of schools. So covering some of these games, SEC games, is something that not every college student gets to do. And we got to do it pretty early on in our, yeah. in our college careers. So I always, mm -hmm. like, advise people to – to schools like this instead of J schools because like yeah. if you go to like a Northwestern, Syracuse, USC, you're not going to be able to like touch your microphone for right. two years. Right. We got to do that as soon as we wanted. Yep. So that was one of the really cool things. And you know, hypothetically, we'll be doing stuff like that in, in the real world. <laughs> um, but I think just having such easy access to such interesting, cool people has exactly. been amazing. Yeah, that's something that I'm so grateful for and that I'll miss. And we're both, you know, moving on to working in the sports media world. Ben's going to be with MLB. I'll be at ESPN. And our director, Colin, will be an engineer with QGenda, making more than both Ben and I combined. <laughs> but <laughs> we, uh, I, we're not going to get that same access when we go to these places. You know, yeah. it'll be different. But um, I think Vanderbilt prepared us well, obviously, for, yeah. for coming here. And that's something that we'll miss. And also, like you said, just at a, such a small school, knowing the athletes on a personal level and coming here and being able to talk to them in class and see them around campus and say hi and everything. That's probably something we'll never get to experience again. Yeah. Also miss being able to sleep in late every day. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, no responsibilities. I mean, yes. Not all the about bills and stuff, <laughs> taxes. Um, all the classics. Yeah. You know, all that good Going stuff. to sporting events for free is something that I'll miss. Well, I'm going to hold on to my Commodore card. So when That's true. So when we come back. Day, yeah. That's true. But... Oh, yeah, they're if real they were world. smart, they just make a new Commodore card every four years or something. They won't do it. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Yeah, well, I'm not going to complain about it, but lots to miss. And, well, what we'll miss the most is obviously Sports Wired. Yeah. Sports Wired being here for the past few years. It's great. It's been a magical time. <laughs> no, but thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks to Cutler for uh, running their, our new favorite game. Any last questions? Don't really have any more questions, but I just wanted to say for you guys, thank you so much for everything you've done for the show, even in just my one year on this. I I came in here as just a little freshman. I didn't know how much and how involved I would want to be in a show like this. I, to be honest, I was a little intimidated working with all upperclassmen, all seniors on this show, but you guys have really taken me under your wing, 
shown me the ropes and everything. I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything you've done for this show and everything you've helped me out with. I've you made me feel like part of the family. And now, now I have friend, I know I have friends in both of you as well as hopefully coworkers someday in some newsroom or some studio somewhere. So just thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I hope I can keep the legacy going as well as you have. <laughs> just tearing up over here. I know, it's all so sad. <laughs> no, we, uh, we're excited to see what Cutler does with the show next year. He's got big plans and we know it's gonna be awesome and we'll be yeah. tuning in oh, for sure. Course. You just gotta get the shows on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's the big thing, get the shows on YouTube. But thanks to everyone who's ever watched our show the past few, you know, past few years. Yeah. We appreciate it. It's been a fun time. Yeah. So I'm Amanda. Till the last time. Yeah, I'm Ben. We got Color and our director, Colin. And good night.